gonna watch some of this, what he's doing here. He's not, his body's not over the top of it as much either. Right. That's because he's paying rapid attention to avoiding the abrasion of fiber on fiber around that spindle. So this is the natural cordage modification for Bojo. With P-cord, it doesn't matter. You know, you're rubbing P-cord on P-cord around that spindle and it's rugged enough to take it. But when you get out there and you're doing natural cordage, that's going to snap your cord like that. Yeah, that's like spending two hours making a freaking cord and then it breaks. I'm watching this. I don't want this, this cord ever to touch. Now, if you have somebody who's going to return and you know they're going to be, like, he's, he was stuck here, so I tortured him and told him to start with hemlock roots. Rootlets are great but they demand perfection. And normally you'd start somebody on something like clothesline or this type of natural fiber and then maybe bump them to basswood and then get them you know, incrementally harder. But I started him with the hardest pieces until he got smoked. And then he went and experimented with other fibers and started getting coals like that. Does that help? So it's really, there's a lot of different variables. A lot of different variables, a lot of different approaches. You gotta know your student. You know, or where they're at in that stage spectrum. If they're all easty or southy, they'll be a lot more patient with it than if they're in, in that southwest space. Of, that doesn't work. I've, I've, I got enough dirt time under my belt, but that's not that's not worth it. Well, if, if I caught them earlier, it might have been worth it because then their game would be that much better. See how it's not braiding there? You get returned students to tell them no birch bark for fire making because it pushes their envelope. Of course, if they need fire, they're going to get birch bark, but pushing the skill just beyond that ability or that dependency on it, whatever it is that we're working with. So, <laughs> tilting the spindle or tilting your bow, also being mindful of the ride up and down on that on that spindle because of the tilt. You want it to ride up and down. Yeah, it, it's going to, right? But so, you, your strokes are now a little shorter as well because you're limited to that. You don't want it to pop off the top or pop out the bottom. You're limited to that. Now, uh, <laughs> that's the difference between natural cord and the P cord. Right? Yes. You want it to do that ride? You will, well, it's going to ride because of the tilt. You want to be aware of... Okay, but if I put it straight and it just stays... <laughs> in that space, yeah, you don't have to worry. There's nothing there. But if I... Oh, if you do it with natural cords and you do it straight, it's going to pop. Because the, the fibers are not like this anymore. They're crossing and running. Right? If you want to demonstrate that, Mike, just kind of just tilt your... Yeah, so if it's like... Now, if it's doing it like P chord, right, as it goes, it's going to go psh, and it's going to rub against the other thing. Fiber on fiber. And that rubbing, <laughs> try it, you know. <laughs> you want to find out what happens. So you want to separate that. So we want to separate it like this. Gotcha. So we want to roll like that. So that's the purpose of the angle. That's, that's the, purpose the purpose of the, the angle. angle. And the yeah. ride. Yeah. I can show you well, form on P chord if you want to get a video of that. It's, it's much different, you know, it's like my body's over it and it, everything's straight and 90 degree angles and lined up. Yeah, and with P-Core, because of that horizontal, you could reef the whole length of your bow, it makes it much easier. But like you, see, like you noticed, that ride up and down with the tilt means you're also limited to how far back and forth you can go. So now, the plateau has always been natural cordage, it's impossible, I can't do it. You can do it, you just gotta be aware of the next step in that evolution tilting either your bow or your spindle and being limited to how far back and forth you can stroke and keeping to that limit. Mike, when, just out of curiosity, when you're using dog man mm -hmm. for your cordage, do you want it about that thick? Uh, that's a little thin for me. I'd like to go kindergarten pencil thickness. There you go. Well, is that basswood or dog man? Basswood. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, to me, this is a good thickness for Dogbane milkweed basswood. The, the three, at least up this far north, the three most rugged. You guys rugged familiar with Devlin in the bottom so you're now? talking yeah. at least that. Yeah, kindergarten pencil. Uh, there's a couple different variations here at the bottom uh, that I like to do with, with this. It makes it tough. Is It loosens up. So I want it to go in there real tight. 
ah, that's what I want. And it's still going to loosen up on me. So if I can get it like, okay, that's tight, I'm going to move it a little bit more. I'm going to fold it back this way, give it a bunch of wraps. That will enable me to kind of hold it there and then adjust it on the fly if I need to. I'm going to put a little bit of beeswax in here. One of the biggest challenges to natural cordage is holding it and keeping it tight. A lot of the times, it's not going to take a knot. So we tell folks, when you make your cordage, it's body length, and you're only using this much. When it breaks, you slide it up and use the next bit. Use the next bit. Hold this in place here. Touch this up. This is just habit. I hate smoking at the top. We notice frustration uh, parameters around bow drill are usually 20 to a half an hour, 20 minutes to a half an hour. So we force a break up for dinner or lunch to break it up and they come back with new eyes and usually they break through that frustration. Oh, and they need this too. A couple modifications. My habit for doing P-Corp bow drill is to put the thing in under and go away from me. Right? If I do that, it's not going to work. It's going to break. So i got to modify and come up underneath. Just make sure there's strings on top. Yeah, so the string going away is on the top. Yeah. You guys will figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know, it looks like a flower. Some kind, I don't know. Almost like sage. <laughs> Are you using just static curiosity? Because there's, there's just obviously all different parameters. Right. The wood that you're using for your hand holder right. is the same wood as your set. No. no, usually denser. Okay. Yeah, so a more dense wood. Okay. So the other bit here is that my notch is facing you. It's not facing me. That's so that you can look down over the top of the hole? Nope. That is so when I angle it, my spindle doesn't go flying out the notch. Okay. Right? Okay. On that? I, seriously, I have always done when blue shack probably had some good paracord or natural whatever. He's always told me to put my notch out. Yeah. So that I can wash the coal. Nice. And see the coal and then you know some people say put it towards the back so you can shield it if it right. rain and stuff like that. But he always taught me to do that. Nice. Yeah, I do. It's right here. Oh! Cast him on the rocks. You see some beeswax? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> neck grease. It's all right here in my neck. See how it starts to slip as I speed up? I'm going to add a little bit of wax here. Just like hand drill, downward pressure is more important than speed. Dust is looking good. Give it one more go. I think that this is what was for me. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure it is. <laughs> I mean, that stuff was really wet when we pulled it out of those piles the other day. It was, it was heavy wet. <laughs> So you see the, see it's starting to fray a little bit, and that's with minimal abrasion. If I use this the way a natural, you know, P cord is done, it's already be broken. The first thing is we don't want it to abrade, so we tilt it so that it's kind of like this. Second thing is the tension. Tension keeps loosening up, loosening up. And that's what gives people the most amount of problems. Um, so we designed this second bow drill person to come in and this way if you're out in the woods with a buddy, you can be like, okay, let's get the most out of this string. The tension is an issue. So what I'm gonna have Jim do is I'm gonna be bowing and he's gonna be on there like this. Right, so he's got one hand on the bow, one hand on the cord. And as soon as that starts to loosen up, he's gonna pull on this cord and tighten up. Does that make sense to you guys? And now he's pulling with me, and as soon as it loosens up, he's tightening, pulling it tight, pulling it tight, separating it like this far. If you know.
Uh, you can crush it to the side and make more contact. There you go. Always keep sight of it. Now I need the most useless tinder bundle. You can even put it above your head. Like maybe this. Yeah, now you should be able to This should be a good tinder bundle. Just drop it. Now you should have to your hands on fire. Nice. Yeah. Fire! Okay. So two person natural never, fiber never cordage bow drill. And start towards me. Come back. It's already starting to loosen up. So we need you to pull out on that cord. And as you can see with the camera, that cord isn't rubbing against it itself. Which is really good, that's what we want. So the notch wasn't good. <laughs> That's the problem there. And the wood's uh, green, but or wet. Still got smoke in there. Yeah. Yes. See all that dust around the outside there? Yep. That, that shows me that the notch wasn't cut good enough. Too brown, or too too brown, not black enough, right? Well, that too. That means that it's usually pretty wet. So this is still wet, but. All that dust piled up around the outside means that my notch isn't wide enough. It's not collecting enough of the dust. It's not doing its job. Instead, the dust is building up around there. But yeah, it's still brown. It's not dark. We we're getting some good smoke there. I bet if this was some good dry cedar, we'd be just fine. I blame Jimmy Kane. <laughs> but you guys see the difference, right? With one person or two yeah, persons? Yeah, yeah. It's like, this, this trick really works really well. And then the third person, well, we don't need the coal, right? We know, we know Bojo works. <laughs> so with three people, <laughs> this is what I've done. Some people want to take sweet. Just in time. Yeah. What we'll do is, um, three people. Step in there. Like I knew what was going on. <laughs> three people. Oh, no bow, I love this. No this bow. is awesome. Oh yeah, this is the Egypt, like the Egyptian. Yeah, my wife called, I got So we got a low guy and a high guy. So Jim, you're gonna be the high guy. Yeah. Um, no, Kobe, you're gonna be the high guy and save my foot. <laughs> See what I'm saying there? <laughs> right over that I've done that before. Bloody foot. So remember, what, what's going to happen here is you've got to be pulling kind of even, like you're on an angle here. I don't know how that's going to affect it. But he's got to be pulling at the same time he's pulling, just a little bit less. They gotta act as the bow and keep the tension on the whole thing. Yeah, that's gonna be the challenge. Okay, let's see. Go for it. Toward Jim first. And I'm easing the pressure. You gotta keep a high in the wall. I'm pulling down now so I can you know, pop up. Arms strong. This is what you say. We got it. And then finally, after drying it out. Is this what you guys do on the sweat? Yeah, this is what we do on the sweat. <laughs> We're definitely doing this. <laughs> Not last time. So there it is. So that was taking the abrasion. That's so it's the one person, the two person, three person, natural fiber, bow drill. Or drill. <laughs> what is, is there a bow in that one? One person? Drill? Makes sense. Is 
there yeah, any finally, such thing as a four person? Sweet. Is there any such thing as a four person, Joe? Yeah. Yeah, we get five people, six people. There's all kinds. The four person is all you need when I go with you guys. Let's look at, let's see that coal there. Yeah. Right on the damp sand. No welcome mat, nothing. Nice. <laughs> very nice. Alright. Alright, we'll pick up again at 5.30. So that gives you guys something to practice, you know. So it really works better in the field when you got a buddy with you. Right, right. Good job. If you don't want it wet. I like that. Good job, Mark. Really good. Yeah, that's the stuff we've been working for years now. It's never easy, really. That's pretty cool. Oh, just because it's really cool. Can I try your antigo?